Hey guys, who's ready to watch me press a bunch of buttons again? As you may have noticed if you're subscribed to this channel, I've been doing some keyboard reviews lately. And it wouldn't be a keyboard review for me if I didn't mention my daily driver, the Echo 3068. It is a Cherry MX Red mechanical keyboard with some thick boy PBT keycaps and I just absolutely love this thing. Thus far, every keyboard I've reviewed on this channel has yet to give the Echo a run for its money. Until now. This is the Geek GK61, and thank you to the good folks at banggood.com for providing not only a review unit, but an affiliate link in the description, as well as a discount for you guys if you're interested in picking this one up. But despite all that, I'm still, as always, at liberty to give my full, honest opinion, good or bad, and you know I'm gonna do just that. Now, I want to preface this by making clear that I'm very new when it comes to the whole world of enthusiast mechanical keyboards. This is all going to be based on my knowledge and experience, as well as a few things I've picked up from other keyboard reviews on YouTube, as well as Reddit. I know a little bit about the GK61 going into this video. I know that there's different versions available. There's one that you can buy where it's just like the board and then you buy the switches separately for your own customization purposes. This model in particular is the pre-built black RGB lit non-Bluetooth version that you can get for about $50 or less sometimes on banggood.com. My box did arrive a little banged up, but fortunately everything inside was just fine. Inside the box you'll get the keyboard, the instructions, a nice braided USB Type-C cable with gold plating on both ends, a keycap puller which again I would not recommend using over a wire one like this to avoid scratching your keycaps, and last but certainly not least, a key switch puller. That is right friends, this one is another hot swappable keyboard and the hot swappable switches that you have with this one are kind of exciting for me. When they were sending it to me I was like, oh my gosh, I want to try it out because I've heard some good things about the switches which I'll get to in a minute. The keyboard comes protected in this plastic bag which I'm just gonna... Oh, just gonna, come, come on, just gonna, there we go. Just gonna open up and take a look at this bad boy. At first glance, you might think that this looks a lot like the Red Dragon K530 that I just reviewed, or a lot of other 60% mechanical keyboards out there. And well, you'd be right. The case has a nice sleek shape to it, though it does have some glossy edges, which again, I'm not a fan of gloss. And to make that worse, the keycaps also are glossy on the sides. Blech, no thanks. The keycaps are double shot ABS, so while they're not the best in quality, they certainly are not the worst. The RGB on this thing is pretty nice. It certainly could be brighter, but I have seen worse. As far as lighting presets go, you've got a lot of the usual suspects that you'll see on just basically what you would come to expect with a standard RGB keyboard. Holding function and pressing the... the... this key... This one will toggle between five more traditional effects, while function and backslash will toggle between the reactive options, such as single key reactive, row, wave, and one that I've never seen before on a keyboard, it's actually kind of pretty cool to see it on this one, audio reactive. Yeah, this thing has a small microphone under one of the keycaps solely built in to react to audio for this setting. Ha! <laughs> Don't make that sound. And now to my favorite part of this keyboard, the thing I was most excited about when they were sending it to me, and that is the switches. The GK61 actually comes with Gateron Optical Switches. While it is available with a few different options, they sent me the Gateron Optical Red Switches, which is perfect for me, it's exactly what I wanted to try. While I love the smoothness of Cherry MX Reds, there is just something altogether smoother about using these Gateron switches. Unlike most traditional mechanical switches, which use some kind of metal connection to send a signal to the PCB and therefore the keyboard itself, either through soldering or the metal pins in more traditional hot swappable switches, these actually trigger through infrared sensors built into the PCB. Pressing down on a key causes a shaft at the bottom of the switch to come down, which then blocks out the light in between the sensors, therefore registering a key press on the keyboard telling your computer that you just 
hit the key. It's pretty cool. So what is the benefit to an optical switch over a traditional mechanical switch? Well, for one, they are more durable. They're supposed to be rated for double the lifespan of a regular mechanical switch. Now, I've never actually had any mechanical switches die on me, but if this has twice the life, then that sounds twice as nice. Right? And in addition, they're technically supposed to register like a little bit faster than a normal switch because instead of using the metal connection to send signal, it blocks the infrared. So it like technically the sooner, like once the shaft gets in there, even if you're not pressing all the way down, it's supposed to register. So it's like you technically get like a little bit faster when you're gaming. So you have like that edge. Gotta have those milliseconds, am I right? It does seem to be a little more sensitive when just kind of lightly tapping on the key but it isn't like an issue where you're gonna have double key presses or accidentally just like type incorrectly all the time. I haven't had any problems when typing or gaming with this thing whatsoever. The only possible downside to this, depending on what you're looking for, is that the keyboard, the PCB built in, is only going to be compatible with other Gateron optical switches. It's just not equipped to use any other switches that have metal pins. So if you are looking to purchase this board and eventually wanna change to like a Cherry or Kale switch, it's not gonna work. You're gonna wanna look elsewhere. There is some slight wobble to the keys, but it hasn't been an issue at all. I mean, these switches are not soldered to the board, so of course there's going to be at least a little wobble, but it hasn't been an issue at all. I don't even notice the wobble. I, li I, I literally have to look for it. The only reason I even found the wobble was because I had to purposely go and test out the wobble to tell you guys whether or not there was wobble. So like it's there if you try, but it's it hasn't been an issue at all. I really do love typing on this thing. I've come to prefer smoother switches, which is why I changed from like browns to Cherry MX reds on the 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 other one. This just feels even smoother and it's it's like a dream. It's like butter. It's like a buttery dream. Personally, I love the smoothness of the feeling of typing on the GK61, but I like the sound of the Echo 3068 a little bit more. Feels a little more chonky. I do like the sound on the GK61. It offers something different. It sounds a little more crispy is the best way I guess I could describe it. But uh, I, I just, I still think I prefer the sound of the 3068. This brings me to another reason I may want to change from the 3068 to the GK61, and that is custom keycaps. The GK61 uses a standard ANSI 60% layout. So that means if you ever want to replace the keycaps on the GK61, you have tons of options out there. You can basically go with almost any set you'll find. The tricky thing with the Echo is that it's a 65% layout versus a 60. Now while 65 can come in different configurations, this one in particular has a small right shift and then the alt function and control on the right side are also smaller than normal. This means if I want to ever replace all the keycaps on this board, I'm going to have to find a set that actually accommodates for those four special keys. And it's difficult, trust me, I've been looking, I've been window shopping for like a couple weeks, and it's, it's hard, at least not without spending more money to try and buy an extra additional subset of keys that, that cover the weird ones for four keycaps. Since this is a 60% keyboard, obviously it's not gonna have all the keys that are on a full-size keyboard or even a 10 keyless. So use of the function key is gonna be basically required on a regular basis to access the secondary function or layers as they are called. Well, luckily, the GK61 handles this in a pretty neat way. By holding the function key and pressing W, E, or R, you have access to multiple layers that you can toggle on and off. So instead of holding the function key to press a, whatever secondary function you need, like delete or the arrow keys, you can just toggle that layer on so that you can simply just hit the arrow key without having to press two buttons. There's also function Q, which the manual refers to as driver mode. I didn't really use it. I kind of tried to mess around with it. Apparently it has something to do with the software. It actually needs the software for you to use it. So I didn't really mess around with it because I just 
I felt no need. The one I use the most regularly is function and W because it turns the right alt control question mark and menu key into dedicated arrow keys. So if I ever need to, I just toggle this mode on and while I'm editing, I just reach over and hit them like they're an arrow key that's built in right to the board. This did take a little getting used to because I kind of already had my muscle memory trained to hit the actual built in dedicated arrow keys on the 3068. But after like a day or two, it was fine. Like I'm already used to it. The only thing I didn't like about it is when you go into these modes it has like preset lights like the colored lights that change and out of the box mine was set to green and the arrows are red kind of gross I'm not a big fan of green really and it also looked very Christmassy. Luckily, I was able to go into the software and change it to colors I preferred. Now, I've seen some reviews on Reddit and on YouTube where people just tear down the software and they bash it and they say it's terrible. Honestly, wasn't too bad. Also, looking at some of the older reviews for this video from like a year ago, it seems like the software has changed quite a bit from what those people experienced. It is kind of complex. It is a little uh, complicated, I guess you could say, but I mean, a lot of software for like Razer and Corsair keyboards is too. Those stop functioning half of the time. This at least seemed to work and it had some actually pretty neat functions. So how I mentioned earlier, there's the function key that you can hold down and press with whatever that other key is to change between the five preset lighting effects in the keyboard. Well, with the software, you can actually change those five pre-built in effects. There's even built in lighting presets and macro sets for specific games like CSGO and League of Legends. So I do think it was cool that I was able to change out some of the lighting effects on the board to something more my taste and it's just already built into the board now. It does have flash memory on it so that if you ever need to take it on the go and you don't have the software with you or don't have your computer with you, you've already got your settings that you have saved into the board. The driver mode is where this varies. This actually relies on the driver installed in your computer as well as having the software. So this is where you get some additional functions that I didn't really mess around with but it is an option there. It's just not gonna be something you can take on the go versus the other layers. There's also layer presets that you can change if you don't necessarily need the ones that are built in. So if you don't need to toggle on a layer like the arrow keys or the function row, you can always simulate a number pad or media controls. Now that I think about it, this keyboard doesn't have built-in media control buttons. That's disappointing. But hey, at least you can program it in there with the software, so there's that. For me, it's functional and it basically lets you create your presets for your lighting and your macros or whatever else you want to do with it. It did what I needed it to do and I really don't see that big of a problem with it. And if you don't want to mess with software, you are good to go with this thing out of the box anyway, in my opinion. It's just there if you want to make any specific changes for you. It's good to have options, like I always say, and there are your options. If you do want to download the software, by the way, you kind of have to look for it. I had to kind of look for it. There is a link to the software on the product page on banggood.com, which again, I have in the description, so you could check that out. So will the GK61 replace my 3068? Well, I still haven't decided. But what about you? Have you decided? Do you want this to replace your current keyboard? Are you looking for a nice budget mechanical keyboard with some nice switches, some hot swappable ability? Well, that's uh, that's this one. This is the board for you. As of right now, recording this video, this thing is $41.99. That might change by the time I get this video out, but hey, that's not bad. And whatever price it is, if you do decide to click the link in the description, I do have 10% off for you in addition, so you could always do that. If you do want to pick it up and you use my link, just understand it is a paid link. It helps fund the channel a little bit, helps give back to, to, to Old Portly a little bit to help fund future videos like this for you. So what do you think? Does the keyboard do it for you? Maybe it doesn't do it for you. I got some other cool links from banggood.com in the description as well. You can check those out if you want. Again, paid links, they come back to Portly if you decide to purchase. If not, cool, no worries. Just remember, as always, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you're new. If you didn't like this video, give me a thumbs down and tell me why you didn't like it. Uh, if you do like this video, it would help the channel a little bit if you shared it with your friends who might be interested. So, uh, that's it for me. I had coffee <laughs> just now, and I'm a little, I'm a little hyped up. I'm a little awake at the moment. <laughs> I'm going to stop this video. My wife's shaking her head at me, I think. <laughs> yep, she sure is. She just confirmed. Thank you. Like, comment, and subscribe. I'm out.